Okay, so we are going to talk about part two, the progression of our business. We're talking about season two, what we did, how it went, how successful it was, and kind of what got us there. <clears throat> so as I'm kind of spitballing this stuff together, I'm going off memory. I'm not writing a lot down. I'm, I'm getting some of the big points that I know are going to matter, some of the big things that we did. Um, but you might catch me backtracking myself and, and wanting to make sure I pull something that I said I did la the year before into this year um, or vice versa. But so year two, you know, I had done that first season and we didn't do a ton of stuff. We had maybe 25 yards. But I knew because I'd already, I've always been wanting to have a business, buy a business, have something. But I knew that I had to get away from my full-time job. Yes, I probably didn't have enough money to even like turn three or four hundred dollars worth of work a week, and I was making mid fifty thousand dollars an hour, or fifty thousand dollars an hour, mid fifty to sixty thousand a year, something like that, uh, in the job I was currently in. But I knew unless I could devote all of my time, that that eight hours, that fifty hours a week, whatever that is that I was dumping into my actual job, I would never get anywhere with this business. And that's the thing. The the business and, and growing a business takes a lot of dedication, a lot of focus. So that year I <clears throat> that year I doubled down on it. I said in April, April first or whatever the last day of March, something like that was gonna be the last day at my full time job. And so we got it in motion. We set a date. We set a date early. And I said, we're, we're going to go for this. I didn't really know what to expect. I I, I was pretty scared. Um, but I was, it was just exciting because I kept getting, we kept getting more little jobs, more little jobs, and kept building, kept building. And from a re revenue standpoint, we went from doing 16000 that first year to doing 108000 the second year. Now, a lot of people say that's amazing, but it's still not. I mean, that's still... You worked full time, and you had guys work for you. Know that was another thing I mentioned in this in the last one. Um, I was always really adamant on getting guys out in the field, getting a team working for you. I'm still adamant on that. We struggle with it all the time, just like everybody else. You know, you get guys, you think they're going to be good, you lose guys, they leave you in the middle of a job, they do whatever the case is. All kinds of crazy stuff happens, and you got to keep rolling with it. You got to keep hiring new people and, and and just flowing with that. But so we early hired people and and put things in place to continue growing. Now I, I only did what I could afford. You know I think I maybe had one or two guys. There might have been a might have been a three man crew with me included that year. Um, but we really started to produce some stuff. You know the beginning of the season. I always realized that structure was extremely important, like writing stuff down on paper or trying to freebie out and have some kind of free system to schedule my work. Yard books wasn't around then, um, but I realized we need something. So we got Jobber, and that was the one year we used Jobber. Um, it helped our business tremendously, but that's why when everyone asked me about Jobber, why we don't use it anymore, is we went from that 16000 to 100000 a year and I could feel that it was gonna. It was hard to do that. It was hard to manage all the invoices and all of the stuff. Um, at that time, I don't know how it is now, but there was no bulk card charge or anything like Service Autopilot has. Mm. Sorry, I gotta stay hydrated. Um, but that was something we put in place to manage, to keep track of the jobs, job notes, um, and, and a lot changed really fast. You know, the other thing that the other thing that we started doing whatever we could but given there wasn't a ton of money we started marketing any opportunity you know i think we our first form of marketing that we did the most with was having a newspaper ad and i kind of remember it getting us fall cleanups and stuff like that in that first year and um, we ran it when we could you know now where we run one i think it never shuts off we you know back then we just ran it when we could and that's something that I know now about marketing. Like if you could even borrow money and, and not borrow, but just get money to go into marketing so you can get known quicker, so you can get out there faster. Um, I know we could do what we've done in five years and in, in a year or two now. Um, but there again, you got to have the money to market. So that, that is a big thing. So the other thing that we did is we created a website. We used Wix to create a website. Guys, don't waste your time creating a free website website get something that 
is going to rank, have something made, read so deep into how to build a WordPress website that you could get it to rank. Don't waste your time, a bunch of time on something that's never going to rank, that's just to send people to because you need that thing to be driving traffic, whatever your business is. But um, in the lawn and landscape business, it has been huge for us. So all these little things pile up and they form the they form what it was that, that got us there, that started to push us there. Now, like I said, I already was kind of concerned about structure, wanted to make sure we were trying to hire, wanted to um, wanted to start marketing, knew that some things were important. And the thing that really made it all come together was I started reading. I started, I might've said this, that I did a little bit before, but I mean this year, I started reading. <clears throat> I do less now than I ever have because I listen to mainly podcasts. But back then, when I was on a mower all the time, I never had to think like about when you're doing estimates or crunching numbers. Like, I can't read during that. But back then, I could just gobble down information on a headset all day long. I would read all day long, every day, every book I could get my hands on about business to better the business. Um, something else that, you know, all of those things help me do, those books help me do. Um, they help me realize like, you know, you got to be out here trying to make a profit. You got to be out here charging correctly. And something that our business, I believe I can attribute a ton of success to is we never, and there might've been a couple times where I just wanted something and it was easy. It was right next to something else, but we never went and offered low prices to get services. We never did it. Everything we've ever done has been premium price because we're going to stand behind what we do. And I never saw that. I never saw an upside to, to lowering price for you to, to gain work because all it did is end up killing you. You know, you get a lot of work right at first. And then when you need employees, you're so underpriced that you can't hardly afford to pay the employees or you can pay for the employees, but there's no money left to do anything else. And, and I, and from that reading and from those things that kind of instilled in me and built in my head that I knew that had to be a focus. It's a huge focus today. Still money is the lifeblood of the business. If you're starting out small, I mean, you got to get a lot of work as fast as you can and you got to learn everything you can about pricing it so you can go out there and actually make money when you're doing it and make enough so you're able to reinvest and keep growing and keep building. And this is a, a constant game, even now. I mean, even though the numbers are way bigger and it goes way faster and we spend way more, it's it's a constant game of watching and thinking of how to create more money, how to create more efficient guys. And um, But yeah, so that year, I spent the whole year on the truck. It was, uh, it was a great year. I think we... I did the hire your friends thing again and made them actual employees and fired pretty sure every friend I've ever hired, um, except for maybe one call and he com commented on one of the last videos. But um, it's just, just a lot of focus. And it's not hard. And looking back, like I could go back and I could fly through those first three, four years of business easily. And that's what's so beautiful about having a business is you expand, you grow, you you as a person become someone completely different as you take this journey along operating a business. So just to rehash it one last time, 16,000 the first year to 108,000 the second year um, seems like a big jump, but when you're small, big jumps are easy. Now when you start getting to you know, 250 to double again from there, 450 to double or try to go even a little more than double from there, you know, those things, as the numbers get bigger, it becomes harder and harder to grow. Um, but there's so many things, so much that happened in that, that second year that allowed us to uh, allow, I, I just got lucky by finding out that I should be reading. I got lucky by going ahead and hiring guys when I didn't think I could afford it. I got lucky by starting to do some marketing and, and getting jobber and knowing that, knowing that I needed some structure. And we've taken all those things that I feel like I got lucky about, and it was just really me reading into it and learning, hey, we need this. And we've just continued to develop and develop and develop and develop those very things. And that is what has just been 
a huge game changer to our business. Uh, guys, I hope you're getting something out of this. I hope you're sticking around to the very end. Um, leave a comment. Let me know. I got some people I got to comment back on yet, but it's really cool to hear how other people's businesses have grown, what their struggles are, how they did it, how they went so fast, how they went so slow, whatever the case is. It's all very interesting. So leave a comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Talk to you soon.